The next tool that we're going to look at in our selection family is the magic wand tool and the quick selection tool. The magic wand tool has been in Photoshop pretty much from the beginning and it works pretty straightforward. In this photograph we're going to use this uh, photo that I took of an avocado to demonstrate it. So let's say that we want to select just the white area to uh, ultimately remove it. Well, we can simply click in the white area and based upon what we have set for tolerance, we'll determine how much of the area it will actually select. So in other words, wherever I click with my magic wand tool, it will say, okay, so if the value is of the value of the pixel is say 255 going back to our earlier discussions about histograms which is pure white 255 then 255 minus 32 it'll select every pixel in that range okay now just like the other uh, selection tools if I hold the shift key down you'll notice that the magic wand turns into a plus if I hold the alt or option key down it turns into a minus so if I want to add this section here, I have a couple choices. I can either increase the tolerance or I can hold the shift key down and click again and continue to do so until I have the shape close enough to where I want to um, select, create my selection. Now, you'll notice that this last click that I made actually selected part of the exterior of the avocado and that's not good so I might want to undo that which is control Z or command Z depending on whether you're on a PC or a Mac and so that brings up my selection and it's about as close as I'm going to get using the magic wand and I'll show you just what the end result looks like if I select right now if I copy right now like we did in the tomato example earlier because we were selecting the white all that I'll copy is the white so let's say that I want to isolate just the avocado I need to invert this selection okay so right now the selection because we were selecting white that's the only thing that's selected what we're after is to have the white unselected and the avocado selected. So in order to switch that around, we want to hold down the shift key, the uh, command key on a Mac, or control key on a PC. So it's shift control on a PC, shift command on a Mac, and the letter I. And whenever I uh, hit the letter I, it inverses the selection. So now you'll notice that the only thing is selected is the avocado. So if I hit copy, control C, and paste, control V, and turn off the background layer, you'll notice that we have the avocado selected. Now, it's also a very sharp edge. And remember in the previous video what I mentioned about softening the edge. So you may want to feather the edge a pixel or two just to take some of the harshness off. So you might be wondering, well, that's great, Tony, but we still have this drop shadow. What do we do about that? Well, that's where some of the future tools that we're going to look at, like the eraser tool, comes in handy where we can actually go in and depending on the brush that we choose we can actually erase the balance of that selection so we can just come in here and erase the remaining drop shadow so that we ultimately end up with just the avocado and, and the uh, the tool that I'm using here, the brush that I'm using with the eraser tool, is actually, I have a hardness of zero. We probably should have a hardness of about 70, just so that it's a soft edge, but it's not um, so soft that it looks stupid. So you notice if I use A softness of 70 is very similar to what we had achieved with the magic wand tool.
And if you decide, you know what, that isn't quite perfect, you can always hit undo and just go back and remove that part. And then we can come in and remove this part of the shadow. And all that I'm doing is holding my left mouse button down with the eraser tool selected. So once it's erased, this area is erased, this is a permanent uh, a permanent correction unless we either hit undo to remove one or to change it back to the previous action that we took or we can use the history tool. You'll notice that there's two sets of eraser so I can go back to paste and get back what I had erased earlier. So there's a couple ways of hitting undo. And so there you have it, we have our um, avocado. Now, if you compare that to the original, you'll notice that the, the back image was actually softer. So it didn't have the hard edge like we have now. So it kind of looks a little awkward. So you might be thinking, how do you get that? And essentially what the easiest way to do that is that whenever you're working with a magic wand tool, okay, um, there really is no way of getting a soft edge unless you use feather after the fact. Okay, so it's important to keep that in mind. But the other tool that we have here, which is the quick select tool, I like a lot because you can get a bit more specific with it. It combines the magic wand tool together with uh, define edges so that it, similar to what we saw whenever we were using the magnetic lasso tool works very similarly but it works extremely fast you can control the area that you're working with because it gives you the ability to adjust the size and the hardness and all of that and I'll show you where this can be an advantage so let's say we turn the hardness down to 60 and we'll leave the size at 30 if I come up here and select Notice how all I'm doing is left, I have my left mouse button held down. And so it's selecting, notice the name, quick select. It's just selecting very quickly. And again, up here, you'll notice that there are three options. You have the quick select tool, just creating a new selection. Then you have add to and subtract from, just like most of the tools but you can choose the add tool as you're selecting. And all that I'm doing is holding my left mouse button down and I'm dragging my brush along. Okay. And so now the whole thing is selected and I can actually go in and define the shadow area a little bit more, but you might be thinking, yeah, but Tony, you also got part of the skin here. So what I can do is actually decrease the size of my brush to maybe 10 choose the subtract tool okay and just run my brush in that area and you might think well yeah but you also picked up some of the shadow again that's okay we're gonna go in and fine-tune it and that's one of the beautiful things about this tool is unlike any of the other selection tools we can go in and really fine tune and get a pretty accurate selection fairly quickly. Now, let me show you um, the difference in using this particular tool. I'm going to inverse the selection again using Control Shift I or Command Shift I, and I'm going to copy it just like before and paste. So now you notice that we have a very clean edge. Okay, clean like before, except that we were able to remove the shadow and everything without having to go in and erase. Now, one other thing that I'm going to do is go back to our selection before, and this time I'm going to hit select, modify feather, and we're going to feather it, say, five pixels. And I'm going to copy and paste. And now five pixels was probably a little bit much. Okay, so let's uh, let's undo that and choose um, feather 
say two pixels it really depends on the size of your image I'm working with a smaller image so um, a couple pixels is a big deal when it comes to smaller images so I'm going to copy and paste and so now it's not bad you'll notice that um, it looks it matches it fairly closely that we have around the edge and in this particular case let's just take it one more step and go to um, just one pixel copy and paste yeah I think that's completely acceptable so the drop shadow is moved the background is removed and everything is completely silhouetted the way we want to so I'm just gonna save this here real quick don't need to show that again now there's one more type of selection that I want to show you here real quick in this video it's not directly related to the magic wand tool or the quick selection tool but it's just as powerful if used correctly and that is under select again it's called color range and if I click on color range you might notice that the interface looks somewhat familiar to replace color and it works very similar to that let's say for instance that we wanted to make a selection of just the seed of the avocado so if I click on the seed and hold the shift key down to add to it you'll notice over here in the selection area you can actually see how much I'm selecting okay and then I can use fuzziness to include the the remaining area so we're pretty close there there's a little bit of brown in this stem here and that's what's picking up here so once I have this fairly solid and I'm happy with it if I click OK you'll notice that it selects just the seed now you also notice that there's a couple small areas that I missed and that's or that got picked up and they shouldn't be so we can come back to say the polygonal lasso tool or the regular lasso tool and if I hold the shift key down which turns it into a plus I can just draw around these couple spots here so that they're included and if I hold the option or the alt key down and draw around these little spots they're excluded okay and you also notice that over here there's one tiny little area that didn't get um, included so I'm just gonna hold the shift key down and draw in that little spot there and so now whenever I copy and paste <clears throat> I have just the seed and of course I could also choose to instead of copying and pasting I could also use that selection just like we have in the past to um, say let's uh, feather it by just one and then I could bring up hue and saturation which is uh, well actually let's do something different let's bring up levels which is control or command L and that gives us the ability to lighten or darken so I could really darken the seed if I wanted to make it more contrasty looking or if I wanted to shift the color I could use hue and saturation which is control or command U so so there you go we have a lot of options that we can work with our images and control them just using select.